Hey there, fifth graders. It's Mr. Tang here again with another week of math here on BCPS TV. Let's keep the ball rolling with our focus on geometric concepts. Today's lesson takes a look specifically at surface area. In this video, we'll cover both of the lessons for the week of June 1st to June 5th. Can you believe it's already June? We wanted to take a second to say, we're so incredibly proud of how hard you've been working. And that even though your elementary adventure is coming to an abrupt end, your learning journey is just getting started. We're so excited for what lays ahead. But for now, let's focus on the task at hand. Today we will be finding the surface area of rectangular and triangular prisms and pyramids. We will do this by applying our knowledge of nets that we learned last week to understand that the surface area of a prism or a pyramid is the sum of the area of its faces. Okay, so this is pretty wordy, so let's go ahead and break it down. So our what for today is finding the surface area of a variety of shapes. We're combining the outcomes of both our lessons from our digital and print packages. So we'll be taking a look at prisms and pyramids. We're gonna go ahead and do this by diving deeper and exploring our own understanding of area and revisiting nets, a different way to represent our shapes unfolded. All of this to better build on our understanding of how individual areas make up the total surface area of a given shape. Let's think about the definition given in our objective for surface area. In the objective, it stated that we would apply our knowledge of area and nets to understand that surface area is a sum of the areas of the faces of a three-dimensional object. Remember that a net is a plane figure pattern that when folded, makes a solid. Think back to the properties we learned last week for prisms and pyramids. Prisms have polygonal faces two identical parallel polygon shaped bases, and they are named by the shape of their base. Pyramids have triangular faces, one base that is the opposite of the vertex where the triangular faces meet, and are named by the shape of its base. Understanding these properties helps us to create nets for prisms and pyramids. Creating nets can help when finding the surface area of a three-dimensional figure. Let's take a look at a few examples now. Look at this triangular prism. What two-dimensional polygons make up the triangular prism? What will the net of this prism look like? One way to unfold this triangular prism to form a net is like this. The net makes it easy to see that the triangular prism is made up of two triangles and three rectangles. Next, let's take a look at a triangular pyramid. What two-dimensional polygons make up the triangular pyramid? What will the net of this pyramid look like? One way to unfold this triangular pyramid to form a net is like this. This net makes it easy to see that the triangular pyramid is made up of four triangles. Now let's see what Pearson has to say about using nets to help us find the surface area of prisms and pyramids. How can you find the surface area of a prism? Think about this question during the lesson. Kelly wants to cover a shoebox with decorative paper to make a storage box for her photos. How much paper will she need to cover the box? You can use tools to draw a net to help you find the surface area of a solid figure. How might grid paper help you solve this problem? You can use grid paper to draw a net of the shoebox. What type of figure is the shoebox? Select your answer. The shoebox is a rectangular prism. 
How many faces does the shoebox have, and what shape are they? Shoebox has six faces. The faces are rectangles. Here is one way to solve the problem. Draw a net of the shoebox. Find the area of each face. If we take our rectangular prism and break it down into its net, we'll see individual rectangles. Now, the best way to figure out the surface area for the rectangular prism is to go ahead and do that and find the area for each of the individual rectangles. For example, this first rectangle on the left is 10 inches by 6 inches, which happens to be the same dimensions as a rectangle across from it, 10 inches by 6 inches. Because you have a rectangular prism, you have three sets of faces with the same repeated calculations. Because here we have the top, or I'm sorry, the bottom here at 10 inches times 8 inches. Now I said top because this top is also the same dimensions, 10 inches by 8 inches. Then you have the front, yes, this one six inches by eight inches and the back is also six inches by eight inches so what we do is we find the area for all of our rectangles then we can add them up to find the surface area for the entire rectangular prism then add the areas kelly needs 376 square inches of paper to cover the box which, if any, of the area calculations are repeated? Explain. There are three pairs of repeated calculations because the front and back of the shoebox have the same dimensions, as do the top and bottom and both sides. Here is another way. Use a formula to find the total surface area, S, A, of the shoebox. Kelly needs 376 square inches of paper to cover the box. Now you know how you can find the surface area of a prism. Now let's shift gears a bit and take a look at how to find the surface area of pyramids. While watching, think about how this is the same as finding the surface area of prisms. How is it different? We can find the surface area of a square pyramid. Start by using this grid to draw an accurate net of the pyramid. First, draw the base, a 6 by 6 square. Each side of the pyramid has a height of 4. And each side is a triangle. Now we're ready to calculate each area. The base is a square. Its area is its length times its width, 6 times 6 equals 36 square inches. Next, we'll find the area of a triangular face. To find the area of a triangle, we use the formula 1 half times the base times the height. So, we calculate 1 half of 6 times 4 which means each triangle has an area of 12 square inches. Now all we have to do is add the areas to find the surface area. And we find that the surface area is equal to 84 square inches. We encourage you to utilize this formula page that can be found either in your packet or in the Learn About section in your Schoology to help you solve problems involving surface area. Along with your formula chart and everything else you've learned today, we're going to go ahead and turn it over back to you.
If you have access, feel free to work through the Try It section in Schoology. There, you will be asked to take your talents to Pearson for some practice buddies that your teacher should have assigned to you. Take your time, read through the directions carefully, and use scrap paper when necessary. And when you're ready and comfortable, check out the Show What You Know section and complete the quick check assignments there. Again, taking your time, showing your work, and using scrap paper when necessary. If you do have access, you should be completing about six to eight Dreambox lessons a week. Remember that you first need to log in to BCPS1 using your own username and password. Then you can access Dreambox through the Instructional and Productivity Tools icon. Well, boys and girls, that's it for us today. You did an incredible job. And as always, be sure to stay safe, wash those hands, and do the math.